Hello and welcome to Stampscaping 101. This is a book here called The Hudson River School, and it was a group of artists at uh, one time that did this particular brand of uh, landscape uh, painting that I really liked, and someone reminded me a few months ago uh, about this book. They were asking me what the title was, and uh, I used to take it around to different workshops and show some different aspects of uh, landscape art that I was trying to teach in uh, one of my classes. Um, I'll put the uh, the title and the, the uh, author and whatnot in the uh, notes uh, for this video, but uh, this is something that I would recommend for everyone, you know, that's kind of into landscape stamping, is to look at some of these old masters of uh, landscape painting, you know, just to get some different ideas as far as lighting uh, and composition goes. I mean, we're kind of limited in a way to, uh, you know, what stamps we have available, you know, in, in terms of trying to match a composition, but we can kind of go off some, some of these concepts here. And I'll show you how it relates to some of the uh, my own work that I've done. Um, like in a scene like this one, we can see this uh, water. Let me see if I can zoom in here. This water-filled waterfall down here is kind of illuminated. But sometimes the uh, uh, the tendency for uh, a scene like this done in stamping form is, you know, people might have a waterfall like that in a stamp, and they might have a tendency of coloring it real blue, like a medium to dark blue or something like that. But like in a scene like this, there's a tinge of a little grayish blue up here, kind of matching some of the colors of the sky. But for the most part, they left a lot of it light so that it captures some of that light and so it stands out from the background. And let me pull out right here a little bit more. Um, but in the scene right here, and I'll show you it time and time again, but you have a, a dark light kind of dark, light areas down here. You get this oscillation of uh, values, kind of um, giving a, a nice uh, richness to the uh, value uh, scheme of a scene. And sorry about all the uh, the glare on this. Kind of couldn't position my um, book, my lights very well for this. But anyway, here's some monochromatics, just some black and white uh, depictions of some of these uh, scenes that uh, that have been painted. A lot of these paintings are really massive. That was one of the things that they used to do in the, uh, the school. Um, this is a, a painting that I saw um, the original version of, or one of the originals, when I was traveling in uh, upstate New York around uh, Rome, New York. But here you have this area of um, cast uh, light and reflected light here, and this is an area that I'm going to kind of go into a little bit in a future video, but this is, you know, something that I call uh, spotlighting. It's really bringing the viewer's attention down here. Um, I don't know, I can kind of go on and on about this whole, um, these whole compositions here, but um, I don't know, little figures, you know, in the, uh, in the paintings to, to, to give, uh, an, uh, an element of scale to a scene, you know, if you put little figures in there, you can kind of, you can kind of tell how large something is supposed to be, you know, by relation. Here's these little figures right here in a landscape looking out into the landscape. I like putting little figures in my scenes, too. Uh, kind of looking out into a scene and whatnot, but you can kind of see, I mean, this is really large. Uh, it's a large illustration in this book, but the, the painting itself is probably really huge, too. Here's another one right here. But here you have this oscillation, again, of light, dark, light, dark, okay? Now, here's some scenes that I've been doing um, in these videos right here, but... Here's this um, moon and the forest floor type of thing, but you have an area of dark, light, dark, you know, light, and dark. So you keep oscillating that, you know, just for um, uh, variation and visual richness. Dark, light, dark, light, dark. So you have a light source, 
Now, I mean, this one is really uh, depicting it, but you have a light source and reflected light. In this case, it's an actual reflection. But, I mean, it goes on and on. I mean, here's it's dark, light, dark, light, you know, dark, light, and dark again down here. And this is, I mean, it's, you know, the same thing I do on just about every scene. And sometimes there's an, you know, it's just light in the middle and it's dark on the outside edge. But for the most part, when I have objects, I, I utilize them, you know, for this uh, lighting convention of oscillating darks and lights across the page or from top to bottom, maybe even left to right, dark light, you know, dark light, dark light, dark light, you know, etc. You can kind of see it going on and on here. Okay. But anyways, these books are really great um, for uh, kind of getting ideas as far as compositions go and color schemes. I mean, sometimes I look at these paintings and I'm thinking, my goodness, you know, how am I going to get, you know, these same colors out of my existing pads? But, uh, you know, now it's kind of hard to see here, but you can kind of see... I mean, this color right here, I mean, when you're thinking about stamping out some mountains, um, you know, what color are they? Well, if we're kind of thinking about them in terms of, you know, the concept, we might stamp, we might think, okay, they're going to be grays and blacks or something like that. But here, here you have this warm kind of glowing light in here. But these mountains right here are really something kind of akin to, you know, a very light version of purple, you know. And again, I know this isn't in this video, you can't really tell that, you know, really great, but you know, let me see if I can get a little bit closer, but it's a purplish tone, okay? And it's something that we probably wouldn't think about using, but if you can look at some of these old masters and how they utilized color and lighting in a scene, you know, it's a really great uh, resource. Here's a scene right here, and you know, you can kind of tell from a distance, but here you have it. It's dark, light, you know, you know a little bit darker down here, but then you have this oscillation of light and darkness within here. By the time it gets down to the bottom of that uh, little river again, you can see it's a little bit darker down here than it is up here and that same thing up here and that again is kind of more of a it's kind of a violet tinge up there against this yellow warmth in the background but again that little darkness on the top and the bottom kind of frames things off just enough otherwise this scene here would be kind of a little bit too open so it doesn't always have to get really dark you know it can be just a little tinge of a uh, you know, added value to kind of uh, frame off the composition, you know, in terms of uh, the top and the bottom. So anyways, on and on. I mean, here's a really dramatic scene right here. Really dark um, area of a mountain. But here you have that light coming through, light source, and reflected light down here. And look how dramatic that is. And that little white speck down there is a little sailboat. And where did they position that sailboat? They positioned it right in the shadow there, so it stands out against the background. So you get a little oscillation and uh, kind of a little, you know, area of high contrast within that little area. And for me, in a scene like that, it draws my eye right down to that little boat in a much larger composition. I guess the original of this painting is a uh, 28 by 45 inches, so that little boat right there is something very small, and that's a little tiny dock right there. So anyways, um, you know, these books, you can get them at a good deal. I think this one was on uh, Amazon or something like that, used for five bucks, and you can pay a couple bucks for, uh, you know, shipping or whatnot. And here's another scene right here. I think this, yeah, this was most different. I think I saw this one as well. This is The Voyage of Life, Life by Thomas. I got horrible glare on here, but anyways, this painting here is a 50, almost 53 inches by 80 inches. So that's a huge painting. I, I saw these originals and I always love these. Uh, I think it's a 
series of three that he did, and I always saw them in art history books, but you know, let me see if I can get you know, rid of some of that glare like that. But anyways, I was traveling through uh, New York giving workshops, and I happened to look at uh, a little brochure in a, I don't know, motel magazine or something like that advertising these uh, pictures, and I thought, oh. And I went and saw them. They were really amazing. But here you have this little area of cast uh, light source up there and an area of reflected light and where they have that reflected light they put that little figure so again dark light dark light down here and that's the water because you get you know and especially kind of churning water it would be reflecting a lot of light so it really stands out and it's nice and dramatic and it's a way to add a lot of visual richness into, you know, your stamped artwork by uh, using that type of convention. Um, one of my instructors in school called checkerboarding, you know. It's when you kind of go across your uh, scene right here, or your drawings or paintings or whatnot, and really uh, kind of mix up the, uh, mix up the values in there. So... Um, each little object kind of stands apart from each other, even on these uh, little areas right here in these trees. I kind of darkened up one side and put a little light on the other side. And uh, sometimes where the light area of the tree meets the sky, I made it a little bit darker on that side. So anyway, so we get a lot of that little oscillation and uh, interplay of uh, darks and lights. Anyways, just some basic stuff. Again, Hudson River School. There's all kinds of other painting, uh, landscape painting movements or something like that. This one was one of my favorites. And um, anyways, uh, there's all kinds of books out there on reference material. And uh, I don't know. I have a couple myself and uh, I love them. So anyways, hope that comes in handy for you. And thanks for watching.